I'd like to call this meeting here, York City Council of Order. Bottom, please call the roll. Mr. Roletta. Here. Mr. Blake. Here. Mr. Bob. Here. Mr. Koss. Here. Mrs. Floyd. Here. Mr. Frazier. Here. Ms. Hall. Here. Mr. Johnson. Here. Mr. Marmy. Here. And Mr. Rapp. We have nine present this evening so far. If you'll please stand for the invocation by Mr. Johnson, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance, and Mr. Butcher, if you'll help. Thank you. As we bow our heads, I want you to be thank thinking of things that you're thankful for. We'll have a few minutes of silence. Lord, we come into your presence with thanks for the beautiful weather, for our friends, for colleagues. Be with us in our deliberations. Help us to understand and be aware of the problems of the world and the city and the state and the nation. Bring us understanding of each of our opinions. Be with those in need, those in joy. Be with those in sorrow. Bless the leaders of the world, the country, the state, and the city. And we ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. Mr. Butcher. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Johnson, Mr. Butcher. I've been reminded this evening also by a couple folks in the audience that they can't hear us up here. And I know we've got the sound system turned up, so if you do the best you can to speak up, they'd, everyone would appreciate it. So, thank you. Next on the agenda, we have caucus that, that is going to get the council to discuss pertaining to the agenda this evening. Do we have anything? Mr. President. Mr. Frazier. I am planning to offer a motion and miscellaneous comments to revisit 1619 and 1620 that was in last session. Okay, thank you Mr. Frazier. Do we have anything else? Bottom, please call the roll of Mr. Rapp. Mr. Rapp. Here. I'll judge from attorneys. Thank you, Mr. Rapp. Next on the agenda, we have the minutes of our September 19, 2016 meeting. Is there a motion to approve those? Move. Motion by Mr. Second. Koss. Second by Mr. Bubb. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Both same sign. That passes. Thank you. We have one report to standing committees this evening. That's finance. Without objection, that will be received in file. We also have reports from city officials. We have one from Barb Jones, our city income tax administrator. The income tax revenue for the period ending September 15, 2016. Without objection, that will be received in file. Next under communications, we have Tim Kraft from the auditor of the uh, Dave Yost State of Ohio office presenting the auditor's award with distinction to city auditor Stephen Johnson. Yeah, it's my honor and pleasure to be here tonight. Um, unfortunately, uh, when you hear about the Auditor State's Office, it's usually because we're doing a special investigation or findings for recovery, but a lot of times we uh, um, get to get out and give some good news, and tonight's one of those nights we're out getting good news, and we couldn't be more happy about it. Tonight I'm awarding the Sea Otter with the Auditor State Award with Distinction. The Auditor State Award with Distinction is the highest award our office gives out. And to receive the Otter State Award with distinction is given to those entities that filed an annual CAFR timely financial report in accordance with the GAAP, as well as receive a clean audit report. A clean audit report means your financial audit did not contain any findings for recovery, <coughs> material citation, material weaknesses, significant deficiencies, single lot findings, or any questionable cost. Um, that's a lot of audit speak, but I just like to put how hard it is to win this award in perspective. The Otter State's office audits over 5,800 public entities throughout the state of Ohio from the Ohio State University to the smallest township in Vinton County. And out of those 5,800 public entities, less than 5% of them qualify for this award. That's how hard it is to get this award. And it's a commitment of, obviously, Stephen Johnson and his staff. So with that, I would like to present the Otter State Award with distinction. Stephen Johnson. Congratulations, sir. Thank you. Then, first of all, I'd like to thank you, and I'd like to thank Auditor Yost as well. But most importantly, I want to thank the members of my staff for their professionalism, their dedicated detail, and their hard work, because that's what makes recognition like this possible. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Kraft. Mr. Johnson, I had to put you on the spot, but how many is that? How many have you one of those? You're, you and your staff. Oh, oh, these? I, I don't know. I think maybe seven. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I should have counted before I came in. <laughs> I thought you might ask that. <laughs> I'm looking forward to coming back next year. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. Next under communications, we have uh, a letter from the Ohio Division of Liquor Control, uh, Liquor Agency Contract. And with that, those will be received in file. Next this evening, we have a public hearing. Bob, would you please read the public hearing? This is regarding ordinance number 16-26 by Mr. Rath, Mrs. Floyd, Mr. Cost, Mr. Marmy, and Mr. Johnson. It's an ordinance changing the zoning classification of certain real property generally described as 965 Mount Vernon Road, City of Newark, Licking County, Ohio, from that of RM, single family residence, medium density zoning district to GB, general business zoning district. We're gonna open this public hearing. Is there any comments for or against? Sir, you just step up to the Dr. Ernie, give us your name and address for the room. Good evening. Steve Eversole, 2495 Election House Road, Lancaster. I'm the general contractor for Pizza Cottage. I have Mr. Halbert here tonight with us. We are asking for council's consideration of this. The Planning Commission looked at it, and I believe they recommended approval of it. They had, a, I believe, a couple caveats they put onto it was a six-foot high fence around it, and we're perfectly acceptable with that part. There's no problem at all with that. And here to answer any of the questions that the council might have for it tonight. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak for or against? Let's get anyone for or against. Okay, we will close this public hearing. Autumn, would you read 16-26 uh, again for the second time? Ordinance 16-26 by Mr. Rath, Mrs. Floyd, Mr. Cost, Mr. Marmy, Mr. Johnson, an ordinance changing the zoning classification of certain real property generally described as 965 Mount Vernon Road, City of North, Licking County, Ohio, from that of RM, Single Family Residence, Medium Density Zoning District to GB, General Business Zoning District. You've heard the second reading of 16-26. What is your wish? Mr. President. Mr. Rath. I'd like to make a motion to adopt 16-26. Second. second. Motion by Mr. Rath, second by Mr. Frazier. Is there any discussion on 16-26? Mr. President. Mr. Rath. Could you, uh, for the record, just state the Planning Commission's opinion on this? I did not. Would you like to go ahead? Would you? Oh, would I? What was that? The Planning Commission's opinion. Oh, um, it says in... Ladies and gentlemen, in accordance with Zoning court Code Ordinance 08-33, Article 155.2.9, please accept this recommendation for zoning reclassification relative to application number PC 16-026. Uh, a public hearing was held by the City of North Planning Commission on Tuesday, um, uh, July 12, 2016, and there was pub excuse me, public comments were given by Steve Eversole, Scott Cardinal, Larry Barth, and Ahmad, uh, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce his last name, of 158 English Avenue. And upon consideration of the information that was presented, the following recommendations for approval were given. Number one, the zoning classification for 965 Mount Vernon Road shall be amended as requested and be established as GB General Business District. Thank you. I'm sorry, there's one more. <laughs> there's a second one. Future development of parcel 965 Mount Vernon Road shall be in accordance with the current zoning code section 130.5 buffering of land uses with a visual screen which states in the case of new construction or a building addition, a visual screen in addition to the provisions in section 125.3 shall be required in accordance with section 130.6. The visual screen shall be a masonry wall, solid fence, earthen mound, or landscaping. Such screening shall be between four and six feet in height and shall be maintained in good condition. When landscaping is used as a visual screen, it shall consist of a strip of land not less than 15 feet in width, planted with an evergreen hedge or evergreen shrubs not less than 4 feet in height, providing a continuous 75% opaque buffer. This requirement would be part of the site plan approval process with any redevelopment of this site and not require a separate agreement. And it's signed Director Rhodes, Newark City Planning Commission Director. Thank you. Mr. Rob, you That's it? That's it. Thank you. Any other discussion on 16-26? 
Seeing none, all of these call the roll vote. Mr. Roletta? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Bug? Yes. Mr. Cost? Yes. Mrs. Floyd? Yes. Mr. Frazier? Yes. Ms. Hall? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Marmy? Yes. And Mr. Rack? Yes. 16 days, 26 passes, 10 0. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the agenda this evening, we have comments from citizens. There are two places for comments from citizens. One is now, and one is after the legislation. Again, this is not a debate with council. This is just your opportunity to come up and be heard. If you'll just give us your name and address for the record. Mr. Butcher. My name is William Butcher, 263 Union Street. I got one comment on the uh, tax report. Here, uh, this past uh, uh, Friday, uh, uh, let's see, six, let's see, August uh, 16th, 2015, I think I did file a income tax. I did put a couple. I did, I did put some money in the safety department for a new North Carolina department one, the new emergency squad. I did put some money in there, and I hope uh, I hope they do get that uh, brand new squad. And I did put some money in the, in their in their savings. And my air comma is, oh, I got a couple of uh, animal friends, and then one's uh, Eugene, which uh, Jeremy lost the word to. I'm sorry about that, Eugene. But uh, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry about that, Jeremy. <laughs> but uh, uh, Jeremy here lost a word to my doggy friend, Eugene. But my air comma is, I'd like to know when my street's going to get paid. I got a couple of uh, animal friends been asking me that, and my neighbors been asking me that, and I'd know what the North City Council is going to be doing about that. My pass. Thank you, Mr. Butcher. Tell your friends to vote for the lobby. That'll help. I will. Anyone else? This first. I'm going to introduce M.H. Gutt of Shalom Missionary Baptist Church. It's nice to be introduced. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. You're like a celebrity. How are you, Eddie Mae? I'm fine. Good evening. <laughs> and thanks for the opportunity to come. I'm Eddie Mae Scott, and I live at 353 Eddie Street. So uh, I'm here on behalf of, and I'm a part of the Think Tank on Poverty. And we would just like to raise some awareness to those of you that are in the public eye about our, the amount of food stamps that a family receives. And they are looking at cutting food stamps. We have estimated that a dollar sixty-two cents a meal. You can't buy a loaf of bread for that anymore. And for those of you that uh, have influence with our elected officials, uh, please uh, let them know that children are the ones that are being affected more so, because. What can you buy for a dollar sixty-two cents, and that's for three meals a day. And on weekends, we are having children who don't have any food at all. Schools are sending home little brown bags so they can have food on the weekend. But if you give a child a bag on Friday, believe me, there's nothing left on Saturday or Sunday. Uh, it's a chronic problem. Some will tell you that it's not a problem, but it is. And if any of you can manage to sustain a good diet on a dollar sixty-two cents per meal, come see me. Also, our senior citizens are affected by this proposal. My husband and I are both retired. He doesn't eat much, but I do. <laughs> so we're able to maintain uh, we're able to maintain our diet and of course we have six children who help contribute but think of the seniors who do not have families to help them and one of the other problems is as seniors we take a lot of meds and so you're making a decision of whether you're going to get your medicine or you're going to buy a loaf of bread. So this is a very serious problem facing our community. And uh, if anyone uh, is interested, please come join the Think Tank on Poverty because that's our focus. And there's lots of more information available. But we wanted our, our council 
our citizens to be aware of what's going on in your community, that we do have families with children who are not receiving enough to eat, and the politicians are looking at cutting what they're already getting, and that's just unheard of. Now, we're entering our season where we think about Thanksgiving and Christmas, and we all know that that's about food and good times, but also remember there are families who dread this time of the year because they cannot provide what they see on TV. So we're appealing to your heart and to the sensitivity that if you have children and family, that it could be you. Some families uh, have families that can help, but then there are families that can't help. So we just wanted to come and uh, share what we're finding and what we are trying to do to help alleviate this problem. Thank you. If you have any questions, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Scott. Anyone else for this first section of citizens' comments? I'm back again. Virginia Beach, 162 Myrtle Avenue. Um, after the last meeting, I, I read the uh, minutes from the last time we were here, and it bothered me that Mr. Marmy referred to us as the township, and Mr. Bob as township folks, and it, it kind of negated, or I thought negated our right to be here to say anything. And I just want to remind you that that area is a mixture of township and city residents. On my east is the house right next door to me is in the city. One house down is in the city. And, and you know, we all get along and we live in harmony. And, and I think the issue is more the residential area and the neighborhood. Um, about one half, one third to one half of the people who signed the petition, 122 signatures, those were city people who signed that. Um, and also the church is in the city, which is something that will be greatly impacted by uh, what happens on that corner. Um, let me remind you that most of these township folks work or have worked in the city and paid city taxes. <laughs> They uh, attend church in the city, they eat in the city, they shop in the city, they bank in the city, and they support city events. So I hope that that's not an issue with those of you on council. Um, a lot of us are just Newark people who happen to live in the township. Um, I did notice Mr. Marmy said, and I quote, I do feel for people in an area that has something move in that they didn't really want. Virginia Beach has property rights. I hope you remember that. Thank you for recognizing that fact, Mr. Marmy. Secondly, I want to thank Mr. Frazier because I think he really has struggled over this issue and, and he has really put a lot of energy and time into studying it. He and I are owners of a huge city zoning map that probably some of you have never looked at. Um, we talked about it um, and the impact that changing that corner would have on the neighborhood. Um, that map, if you look at it carefully, I do not see any areas on all of 21st Street from beginning to end where a business zoning is allowed to go three lots into a re single residential neighborhood. Those places that Mr. Marmy mentioned, Big Bear Hearts, Myers, Kroger's, and Walmart, they're next to multi-residential. They are not next to single residential homes. Um, the exception to that would be on Church Street and, and one corner of West Main Street where that has been allowed to occur. Lastly, I want to thank those of you who voted to keep our neighborhood a residential area. Thank you, Mr. Roletta, Mr. Koss, Mrs. Floyd, Mr. Johnson, Mr. Blake, Ms. Hall, and Mr. Frazier. All of you realize that changing the zoning, even to the next zoning up, which would be medium intensity business, would still allow the possibility of an eating and drinking establishment, a laundromat, a quick lube, a car wash, auto sales, a drive through or a pawn shop. Even in that lower than limited would still allow those things. Um, we know this could come back up tonight, and I hope if it does, that you will thoughtfully consider what you would want in your neighborhood next to you. I'm going to quote Mr. Cost from the minutes, and he said, a neighborhood, 
of people have property rights as well. Myrtle Avenue is not a business corridor. Myrtle Avenue is a residential neighborhood. I think there is a big distinction. Thank you for that nonpartisan op observation, Mr. Koss, and thanks to all of you for listening. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, we'll move forward. If anyone else want to speak during this first section, put your hand up now so I know. Okay, Mr. Morris. I'm Dave Morris at 363 Queens Drive North, Newark, Ohio. Uh, I'm always thankful for this opportunity to be able to address council. I think that's a, that's a real plus for the city of Newark. Since you guys already passed the minutes from the previous uh, meeting, I'd like to, to read uh, about what Mr. Fraser had to say the last meeting. It says, I've spent last month looking at the zoning code trying to determine the best place where we, where we find ourselves. Looking at the zoning code, looking at what the rest of 21st Street is zoned, and looking at what is currently zoned. There is built into the zoning definitions of general business, medium intensity business, and general office, and the purpose of that is to ensure that there is a buffer for, for when it bumps up or, or abuts to uh, residential property. So when it comes to limited commercial being brought to the table to butt up against a residential neighborhood, this is where we get into a, have, where we where we have a lot of these issues. I understand the goal is to increase business and improve opportunity for business, but when it comes to limited commercial, it opens up a whole quagmire of what can go into there with no plan in place or for the opportunity of the impact of the neighborhood. With the traffic patterns being what they already are and the business being in place in general district, I don't feel it is in our best interest to go into a, a spot zoning for limited commercial on this property. Also, open up the opportunity for limited commercial throughout the city. I will oppose that as well. And I appreciate that, Mark. I really do. However, I'm hearing rumors that you might be, since you were on the prevailing side, that you might bring up a motion tonight. I see your name. Okay, might, might. Oh, you are? Okay. Uh, uh, to, to reconsider that motion that you all passed, or failed, I guess, failed is the proper terminology last, last time. I always find I'm in wonderment, I guess, when a person in less than 340 hours goes from being solidly for a neighborhood to be for a zoning issue. I, I don't get that. And, and I guess what I'm asking you is, I don't know what this is called, but at the last of the meeting, D gets a first shot, then Jeremy, and you go around the circle and you kind of say whatever's on your mind. If you would, please explain in great detail, step by step by step, how you went from being uh, against the zoning and maybe there were a few people on council that helped you think through this process. If there were, I'd like to know, and, and our neighbors would like to know that too. So if you would, please accommodate us. Thank you very much. Mr. Walker. Bob Clock to 289 Myrtle Avenue. Uh, Break-in, speeding, criminal trespassing, Danger, danger from speed to the children and others are just a few of the things, but very important things as to what could take place with the business. You know, people going to that business are definitely going to come off King Road and they're going to go through our area. And it doesn't have to be a, a, a big business. People going off of 21st Street are not all going to go back on 21st Street and leave that business. They're going to come through our area. Now that's not going to help our area, but it's going to hurt it. And, and there are children, there are elderly that are in danger. And perhaps not everybody that travels through that area back and forth in a car, there's also going to be foot traffic. And as we have seen, but the person that wants the business doesn't know about the foot traffic or the car traffic. But we do. We live there. 
And it is, uh, it is not good. It's not good now. Let alone if a business goes up there. I talked to a homeowner on Independence, which is the first street from King Road that goes into our area. And he says, my gosh, he says, we can't have any more traffic here. We got enough. And we got enough foot traffic as well. I, I don't know about rules and regulations. But we are here because we care. Is the business owner here and I don't see him? I know he doesn't have to be here. We don't have to be here, but we are. Where is the business owner? I don't think he's here. last thing I hope there wasn't any bullying or berating about decisions made because I'll tell you something there's a better word for a bully and that's a coward and I can't believe that anybody would give in to something like that thank you Thank you, Mr. Klopner. Again, there's one other time for citizens' comment uh, before miscellaneous. I guess I could do the one minute. Mr. Marmy, Mr. Frazier, do you want to use that? Do you want to make a comment? Um, I'll take my minute, I guess. Uh, the easiest thing for me to do is to leave it lie and not make the right decision. What, what I'm trying to do is get a compromise in place that adequately protects the residents and also provides for the correct zoning to take place on 21st Street. The biggest fear that I have is that appropriate zoning on 21st Street compounding in residential neighborhoods. So what I'm looking to do is get the right decision made and not cost the city more money by starting the process over again. Thank you, Mr. Frazier. We'll go on. Ordinances on the second reading, 16-30. Ordinance 16-38 by Mr. Rath, Mr. Marmy, Mrs. Floyd, Mr. Cost, Mr. Johnson. An ordinance authorizing and directing the Newark City Safety Director to certify to the Licking County Auditor the sum of $509,034.34 incurred by the Newark City Property Maintenance Division with respect to property maintenance violations to be placed as a lien upon certain parcels of real property situated in the City of Newark, Ohio. Referred to second reading as 16-38. What is your wish? Mr. President. Mr. Rapp. I can make a motion to adopt 16-38. Motion by Mr. Rapp. Second. Second by Mr. Bubb. Is there any discussion on 16-38? Mr. President. Mr. Rapp. This is a periodic process that we, we take to uh, put liens on properties who have had property maintenance fines levied against them and not paid. Thank you, Mr. Rapp. Anyone else? All right, please call the roll vote. Mr. Roletta? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Bubb? Yes. Mr. Koss? Yes. Mrs. Floyd? Yes. Mr. Frazier? Yes. Ms. Hall? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Marmy? Yes. And Mr. Rapp? Yes. 16-38 passes 10-0. Next on the second reading, we have 16-39. Ordinance 16-39 by Mrs. Floyd, Mr. Marmy, Mr. Johnson, Mr. Koss, Mr. Rath, an ordinance vacating an alley as shown on the plat of O.F. Connell's subdivision of outlaws L, M, N, and O of the William C. Mahalam addition to the town of Lockport as recorded in plat book 2, page 104 of the Lincoln County plat records. Said alley is located between 172 and 180 Grant Street. Refer to second reading of 16-39. What is your wish? Mr. President. Mrs. Floyd. Make a motion to adopt 16-39. Motion. Okay. Motion by Mrs. Floyd, second by Mr. Cost. Is there any discussion on 16-39? Just that there Mrs. is no Floyd. opposition at all to, to this, so um, there's no problem with passing it. Thank you, Mrs. Floyd. Anyone else? Let Autumn please call the vote. Mr. Roletta? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Bubb? Yes. Mr. Cost? Yes. Mrs. Floyd? Yes. Mr. Frazier? Yes. Ms. Hall? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Marmy? Yes. And Mr. Rapp? Yes. 16-39 passes 10-0.
Next, we move on to resolutions on the second reading, 16-84. Resolution 16-84 by Mr. Marmee, Mrs. Boyd, Mr. Cross, Mr. Johnson, and Mr. Rath. A resolution appropriating monies for the current expenses of the municipal corporation. You heard the second reading of 16-84. What is your wish? Mr. President, Mr. Marmee, I make a motion to adopt resolution 16-84. Motion by Mr. Marmee. Second. Second by Mrs. Floyd. Is there any discussion on 16-84? Seeing none, I'll please call the roll vote. Mr. Roletta? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Bubb? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mrs. Floyd? Yes. Mr. Frazier? Yes. Ms. Hall? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Marmy? Yes. And Mr. Rapp? Yes. 16-84 passes 10-0. Next, we have resolutions on the first reading, 16-86. Resolution 16-86 by Mr. Marmy, Mrs. Floyd, Mr. Cobb, <coughs> Mr. Johnson. A resolution appropriating monies for the current expenses of the municipal corporation. 16-86. Mr. President, Mr. Marmy. I make a motion to waive the two-day reading rule on resolution 16-86. Motion Second. to waive the two-day reading rule by Mr. Marmy. Second. Second by Mrs. Floyd. Mr. Marmy. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, these items all need to be expedited because they are items that need um, immediate attention. Uh, everything from getting a new scram unit to making sure that our um, court system can run, still continue to run because of some of the monies that need to be appropriated. So thank, thank you, Mr. Marmy. I'll please call the roll with two day rule. Mr. Roletta? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Bubb? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mrs. Floyd? Yes. Mr. Frazier? Yes. Ms. Hall? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Marmy? Yes. And Mr. Rapp? Yes. Two day reading was waived, Mr. Marmy. Thank you, Mr. President. Make a motion to adopt Resolution 16-86. Second. Motion to adopt by Mr. Marmy. Second by Mrs. Floyd. Do we have any other discussion on 16-86? Seeing none, I'll please call the roll vote. Mr. Roletta? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Bubb? Yes. Mr. Koss? Yes. Mrs. Floyd? Yes. Mr. Frazier? Yes. Ms. Hall? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Marmy? Yes. And Mr. Rapp? Yes. 16-86 passes 10-0. Next on the first reading, we have 16-87. Resolution 16-87 by Mr. Cost, Mrs. Floyd, Mr. Johnson, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor of the city of Newark to prepare and submit to the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development a one-year use of funds action plan along with an application for fiscal year 2017 federal community development block grant funds as required by 24 CFR Part 91.220 for various programs related to housing and community development. 16-87 will be held for two weeks for a second reading. And last this evening on the first reading, we have 16-88. Resolution 16-88 by Mr. Murray, Mrs. Floyd, Mr. Cost, and Mr. Johnson. A resolution authorizing and directing the mayor of the city of Newark to prepare and submit applications to the Ohio Department of Public Safety for fiscal year 2016 Edward Byrne Justice Assistance Grant funding. And 16-88 will be held for two weeks for a second reading. And that concludes our legislation this evening. Thank you. Next on agenda, we have our second opportunity for comments from citizens. Do we have anyone? Hey, Mr. Wynn Butcher, 263 Union Street. Uh, there's one thing, there's one concern of mine uh, 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 tonight. Last Friday, I went home and I uh, just was, on, was just uh, on the back porch and I saw the school bus drive up, uh, drop kids off. And I just saw this car go right through the school bus's Auburn lights. And I, I said to myself, what, I, that really made me mad. And I didn't know what the city of New York uh, like to see or somebody or, one, or someone stay down on that street make sure that does not happen. There's about, uh, about three, see, between three, about three, between three and three thirty in the afternoon. And now I like to know what the city's going to be doing about it. And I, I'm afraid, uh, I live in the Jeremy's ward. I'm just so afraid my, my city can get hit. Last time I saw a kid get hit like that was over in Columbus, over in Hubbard. 
And I'd like to know what the city is going. I'd like to know what the city. I'd like to know what the city is going to be doing about that. That pass. Thank you, Mr. Anyone else for citizens' comments? Okay, we'll move on. Anyone from the administration this evening? Our award-winning auditor, Mr. Johnson. Thank you, Mr. President. I'll pass. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. <laughs> Our law director. Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> Go ahead. I'll pass. <laughs> Mr. Sasson is a big Clemson fan, in case you didn't notice his tie. And Two I'm tired. <laughs> Okay. All right, Mr. Roletta, we'll move on to miscellaneous. Thanks, I'll pass. Thank you, Mr. Roletta. Mr. Blake? Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I do want to compliment uh, Mr. Johnson on his work that he continually does. And I know I had a chance uh, when I first got elected to council to serve as chair of finance, and so we had a chance to talk about on a more frequent ba basis at that point. And it was always an enjoyable time to get to learn about city finances. And so I just want to compliment you publicly on the work that you and your office do for, uh, for our citizens and to keep our uh, uh, funds uh, audible and able to uh, be accountable. So thank you so much for your work. Um, I do want to announce a, a few things. Um, October 9th, uh, this Sunday, there at the Davis Shea House from 2 to 5, there's a, a collaboration of uh, organizations come together to provide a diversity event. Uh, there's going to be music, food, um, celebration of uh, um, all of our diversity here in Lincoln County, not only just race, but gender, ethnicity, um, uh, religion. So that should be a fun event at the Davis Shea House this Sunday. Uh, on October 11th, um, sent out invitations to some people here on the dais and others in the community. The South North Civic Association is hosting a, um, an event. Uh, it's going to have Judge Stansbury, our police chief, um, and hopefully some members of council and some other folks. Hopefully our law director might be able to attend. But we're going to really just sort of have a casual conversation about the disease of drug addiction and ways at which we can partner not only with law enforcement but with nonprofits and others to uh, sort of combat that and to have understanding of that. And so that's one of the 11th at the South North Civic Association meeting house. And if you haven't had a chance to come down to that, we welcome you to come to do that. Um, what was the time on that? It's only 5.30. And then uh, October, or I'm sorry, I know I'm getting long, so let me just skip that. We can announce that later. And then I do want to make recognition, um, you know, as I was sitting here and I was leaning over to Councilwoman Hall, I was looking at Carol Floyd's multicolored glasses over there. Um, but that, <laughs> because it reminded me, um, I have uh, two visitors tonight. Uh, my Aunt Margie and my cousin Erica are visiting from the Florida Keys. And so uh, uh, they're visiting because my grandma's turning 80 uh, this week, and so we have an 80th birthday celebration for my grandma Maddie. Uh, but yesterday we took a walk around downtown Newark, and we went around the fountain, which was also multicolored. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, I'll relate it back to your glasses eventually. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> So I'll, I might ramble a little bit. I'll get around to the point. But uh, so that we had a, uh, you know, Erica hasn't been here, what, eight months or so? And so to see the changes that have happened in downtown Newark uh, since she was last year, uh, we got a chance to walk around and uh, look at that. And so you know, I want to both uh, welcome you to council tonight and uh, the grandma's birthday parties on Friday. So that'll be a good time, too. So uh, with that, I'll pass. Thank you, Mr. Blake. Mr. Bob. Congratulations, Steve. That I'll pass. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bob. Mr. Goss. Steve, I want to thank you for everything that you and your office do for the city of Newark. It's a, that's a great honor, and we're all really, really proud of the work that you do. I'd also like to thank the neighbors of Myrtle Avenue for being willing to come back again tonight and express your views and uh, remind us how you feel about things. Thanks for being here. With that, I'll pass. Thank you, Mr. Goss. Mrs. Floyd. I, too, want to say congratulations, Steve. Well deserved, and to your office staff as well, because I know they do a lot of work, too. A uh, couple reminders. This week is the opening of 31 West. They have music October 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th uh, in the ballroom. And so that's another addition to everything that's going on downtown. Uh, and this is way in advance, but October, Thursday, October 27th is Safe Trick or Treat down on the square. Uh, it's one of the most fun times from 5 o'clock to 6.30, and there are 50 or so organizations or businesses that pass out candy to kids. and. I don't know, last year I passed out at least 700 for the DNA, 700 uh, Wendy's 
free Frosty coupons. So uh, there are lots of kids there. There are lots of, lots of costumes, and it's a safe place to be. And finally, I want to mention, and I mentioned this to uh, Mr. Ellington earlier today, I just want to remind council members that according to our rules, we and I know I go over it occasionally, we have a three-minute time limit and miscellaneous. Uh, it's not a, a time for long discussion. I mean, and that's been in the rules for quite a while. And with that, I will pass. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Floyd. Does everybody look down this way? <laughs> D. <laughs> I know. Uh, you got to ask her to calm down. Wow. <laughs> Mr. Frazier. Um, I'd like to make a motion to reconsider Ordinance 1619 and 1620. Mr. Sasser, do we have to read those? No. Okay, let's do one at a time. Mr. Frazier, according to council rules, or the charter actually, you can at the next meeting you can make a motion to reconsider if you voted on the prevailing side at the last meeting, which you did. So we'll start with 16-19. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Buck. Any discussion on 16-19 to be reconsidered? Mrs. Floyd? Uh, I don't know what he's going to reconsider it to, whether he wants to go to, you mentioned on the phone to me, general business, or whether you're talking about uh, bringing up again uh, the limited commercial. Um, I just want to mention that if you go to general business, that a lot of the same things uh, that Virginia mentioned, uh, a neighborhood grocery store, a tattoo parlor, a restaurant, um, a gas station, a quick glue, tire store, car wash, um, pawn shop, you know, all those things are, you know, could be included at that area as well. And I realize that you sort of want to make everybody comfortable with what's going on and unfortunately in a zoning situation that doesn't happen. I mean, there's some, one group that's really happy and one group that's really not happy. And so, you know, I'm opposed to uh, reconsidering it. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Boyd. I, I would agree. I think those are the toughest, the zoning probably the toughest ones <laughs> we have. It is. Anyone else? Okay, I'll please call the roll to vote for, to reconsider. Mr. Roletta? No. Mr. Blake? No. Mr. Bubb? Yes. Mr. Cost? No. Mrs. Floyd? No. Mr. Frazier? Yes. Ms. Hall? No. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Marmy? Yes. And Mr. Rack? Yes. By five, the chair will vote yes to reconsider. Mr. President? Mr. Frazier? I would like to make a motion to amend 1619 and 1620 from general commercial to general business. Point of order. Mr. Rask, we could only do 1619 and then order. Yeah, we'll just do one. That's fine. Thank you, Mr. Rack. You mind if I speak to that? Uh, not yet. There's yeah. a motion to amend 16-19 to general business. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Bud, Mr. Frazier. So this is the 21st Street lot. And so all through 21st Street is general business. And so the recommendation that I have is to continue with this zoning of 21st Street for the long-term future development of 21st Street. It also offers some protections. It's not as um, impacting as limited commercial, and it will be a nice uh, way to continue this current strategy to have a business district throughout 21st Street as future developments and businesses uh, can continue. Thank you, Mr. Treasurer. Is there any other discussion? We're voting to just amend it at this point in time. Uh, and, and I have a question. How many votes will it take to amend it? It'll take six votes to amend it. Call please call the roll. Mr. Roletta? No. Mr. Blake? No. Mr. Bubb? Yes. Mr. Cost? No. Mrs. Floyd? No. Mr. Frazier? Yes. Ms. Hall? No. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Marmy? Yes. And Mr. Rack? Yes. The chair votes yes to amend. Mr. President. Mr. Frazier. I'm going to make a motion to amend 1620 from general commercial to general well, business. Let's finish 16-19. 16-19 is now amended. Now, what are we going to do with that? Oh, I'm going to make a motion to send that back to the Planning Commission. You want to table 16, amended 16-19 to the, to the Planning Commission? I'll second that. Second by Mr. Bubb. We still all legal, Mr. Sasson? Yes. 
the order. The order. <laughs> the most direct answer I've ever heard. Yeah. <laughs> um, so they just. Mr. President, so in order to respect the rights of property owners, we're going to send this back to the Planning Commission. Um, they're going to review it, make sure everything's in order, make sure that there's protections for residents as well, and we're going to let them uh, bring this back to Council to make sure that um, they get a chance to look at it as well. With their recommendation. With their recommendation. Okay. Any other discussion? I'll just call the one vote. Mr. Roletta? No. Mr. Blake? No. Mr. Bob? Yes. Mr. Cost? No. Mrs. Floyd? No. Mr. Frazier? Yes. Ms. Hall? No. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Marmy? Yes. And Mr. Rapp? Yes. And the chair votes yes, so we'll mm -hmm. refer that to the Planning Commission. Mr. President? Mr. Frazier. I would like to make a motion to amend 1620 from general commercial to general business. Uh, do we, we haven't voted to reconsider that yet, I don't believe. I, that was my first motion, but I will make a motion to reconsider 1620. Motion to reconsider 1620 is our second. Second. Second by Mr. Bob, Mr. Frazier. Um, so this is to reconsider the Myrtle Avenue lot, which is um, adjacent and the third lot over. And so uh, we're going to follow the same process of making that general business and sending that back to the Planning Commission. Um, for them to consider and make the protections and uh, any revisions that they have. Any other discussion? I'd like to ask, what's your general Johnson? business? How does it differ from uh, general commercial? From general commercial? What, what would be the differences in types of business? With the room. Uh, Mrs. Floyd has her book there. She's <laughs> looking for you. I have to find it. I turned the page. General business includes Everything that's in high intensity business, uh, moderate intensity business, low intensity business, uh, general office and church school uh, business. And that includes everything from many warehouses to a restaurant to a car wash to a gas station to hotels and motels, tattoo shop, skating rink, golf driving range, bowling alley. Uh, quick lube, muffler, brake shop, drive-in with drive-through sales, uh, music business, computer, home health care <coughs> services. These are all. What does general term. commercial include? I think that's what the real question is. <coughs> the general commercial. Uh, no, I. The, this is general, like general business. business sounds exactly it sounds like very commercial. similar as what it does. Convenience stores, meat, grocery, or pharmacy stores, beer, wine, or food carryout. Antique or craft shops, barber beauty shops, some more intense than others is what it amounts to. Some that would have lots more lights, traffic, noise than others. Thank you. Do we have, do we have any other questions? Okay, let's vote to reconsider 16-20. Mr. Roletta? No. Mr. Blake? No. Mr. Bubb? Yes. Mr. Cross? No. Mrs. Floyd? No. Mr. Frazier? Yes. Ms. Hall? No. Mr. Johnson? No. Mr. Murmy? Yes. Mr. Rapp? Yes. And Mr. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. That was it. Mr. Rapp? 16 20 fails. 6 to 4. So 16 20 will not be reconsidered and will not go to the planning commission. Mr. Frazier, so you're gone. So, um, based on what, what the next steps are, this will go back to Planning Commission for the Myrtle Avenue lot um, to be considered general business. Um, the residential property. No, the no. daycare lot. The daycare lot. That's, I'm, I'm sorry, the 21st year lot. I apologize. So, it's been a long night. You know, a lot of, a lot of work time. Um, and so the, the hope is that the Planning Commission can get it right for how 21st Street should be zoned. Um, we'll hear it again. Um, you guys are all welcome to come back. I appreciate um, your level of involvement. You're wanting to talk to me and discuss this issue. And uh, we hope that this doesn't drag on forever, which is why I brought it back up tonight. Um, because it's not fair to you to start the process all over again and have you back up over and over again. So I appreciate your time and patience. 
and uh, I look forward to talking to you guys again. With that pass. Thank you, Mr. Frazier. Ms. Hall? Uh, yeah, I would like to thank Myrtle. Make sure you speak up, please. I would like to thank the Myrtle <laughs> thank new people to be here, too. And Mr. Johnson, congratulations. And uh, with that, I'll pass. Thank you, Ms. Hall. Mr. Johnson? I pass. Mr. Marmon? Yes, I need to call a finance committee meeting. Um, Congratulations, Mr. Johnson. Uh, another job well done. And a special congratulations to your team. I'm sure that, uh, that it's very well deserved. Um, one other thing, uh, William, I believe if you ever see a car passing a school bus with the red lights, try to get the license plate number, you can still call the police even after the fact. The school bus driver is supposed to try to do the same, but if you see the license plate, definitely call the police and something can be done about that. But it isn't something that we can do here at City Hall, but we, you need to call the police at that point, okay? And with that, I pass. Thank you, Mr. Army, Mr. Rapp. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Kudos to you and your staff for your award, and uh, special kudos to you for giving credit to your staff. Very nice. Exhibit of leadership. Uh, call it a service committee meeting, and with that, I'll pass. Thank you, Mr. Rapp. Mr. Johnson, congratulations again. Another job well done, as always. You and your staff do a great job. If you have a question, you have the answer, or if you don't, you get back to us with the answer directly. So, thank you so much. Our next committee meeting is October 10th at 5 30 here in this room. Our next full council meeting, which we're not done with this one yet, is October 17th at 7 p.m. Uh, Thank you all for coming this evening. We appreciate your input. Is our motion to adjourn? Motion. Motion by Mr. Rath. Second. Second by Mr. Frank. All in favor, same probably saying aye. Aye. Both same time. We're adjourned.